Hello students, in this lecture we will discuss about the phenomena of combustion and in spark ignition engines and the variables that affect the combustion. Combustion of the fuel air mixture inside the engine cylinder is one of the processes that control engine power, efficiency and emissions. Therefore, it is important to study the combustion phenomena to understand the engine operation. In spark ignition engines, the fuel is normally mixed with air in the engine intake system. Following the compression of this air fuel mixture, an electric discharge initiates the combustion process. A flame develops that is created by the spark discharge and propagates across the cylinder to the combustion chamber walls. At the walls, the flame is quenched or extinguished as heat transfer and destruction of active species at the wall become dominant processes. An undesirable combustion phenomena that is the spontaneous ignition of the substantial mass of air fuel mixture ahead of the flame before the flame can propagate through this mixture which is called the end gas can also occur. This auto ignition or self explosion combustion phenomena is the cause of spark ignition engine knock which due to high pressure pressures generated can lead to engine damage. The combustion process is a fast exothermic gas phase reaction where oxygen is usually one of the reactants. A flame is a combustion reaction which can propagate subsonically through space and the motion of the flame relative to the unburned gas is the important feature. Normally in engines fuels are burned with air. Dry air is a mixture of gases that has a representative composition of volume of 20.95% oxygen, 78.09% nitrogen, 0.93% argon and traces of amounts of carbon dioxide, neon, helium, methane and other gases. In combustion, oxygen is the reactive component of air. So it is usually sufficiently accurate to regard air as consisting of 21% oxygen and 79% inert gases taken as nitrogen. Combustion stoichiometry basically explains the relations between the composition of the reactants that is fuel and air of a combustible mixture and the composition of the products. Since these relations depend only on the conservation of the mass of each chemical element in the reactants. Only the relative elemental composition of the fuel and the relative proportions of fuel and air are needed. If sufficient oxygen is available, a hydrocarbon fuel can be completely oxidized. The carbon in the fuel is then converted to carbon dioxide and the hydrogen to water that is H2O. And this is the overall chemical equation shown on the slide which is required for the complete combustion of one mole of hydrocarbon. So we have taken example showing the chemical balancedness of the equation for methane as well as hexane. Now as nitrogen is 79% by volume and oxygen is 21% by volume. So if you divide 79 by 21, it is somewhat 3.78 times. So we can say that in air, nitrogen is present in the quantity of 3.78 times that of oxygen. And I should clarify here that volume and moles are basically proportional to each other so it means that many moles of nitrogen will be present that is if one mole of oxygen is there then 3.78 times moles of nitrogen will be there 
so this uh, equation basically written on the slide that is showing you the chemical balancedness of the hydrocarbons when oxygen is considered to be present means when you are considering air in the previous slides we considered only the oxygen but here we have considered the nitrogen also now air fuel ratio air fuel ratio is basically defined as the ratio of mass of air in the feed mixture to the mass of fuel in the feed mixture now fuel air ratio is defined as the reciprocal of the air fuel ratio it means it is the mass of fuel in the feed mixture to the mass of air in the feed mixture so fuel air ratio is reciprocal of air fuel ratio and rich mixture implies the mixture that is containing more fuel than necessary means it is containing more fuel than that of stoichiometric air fuel ratio whereas lean mixture is containing more air than necessary means it is containing more amount of air as stated or as prescribed by stoichiometric air fuel ratio if sufficient oxygen is available a hydrocarbon fuel can be completely oxidized the carbon in the fuel is then converted to carbon dioxide and the hydrogen to water that is h2o with less than the stoichiometric air requirement that is with fuel rich combustion there is insufficient oxygen to oxidize fully the carbon present in the fuel and hydrogen present in the fuel to carbon dioxide and h2o the products are a mixture of co2 and h2o with carbon monoxide and molecular hydrogen as well as molecular nitrogen the product combustion cannot be determined from an element balance alone an additional assumption about the chemical composition of the product species must be made because the composition of the combustion products is significantly different for fuel lean and fuel rich mixtures and because the stoichiometric fuel air ratio depends on the fuel composition the ratio of actual fuel air ratio to the stoichiometric ratio is an informative parameter for defining the mixture composition the fuel air equivalence ratio is defined as the ratio of fuel air in actual conditions and to the uh, that of fuel air ratio in stoichiometric conditions now inverse of this fuel air equivalence ratio which is denoted by phi is nothing but lambda so it is the ratio of air fuel ratio in stoichiometric condition and the air fuel ratio in actual condition and it is defined by lambda which is equal to inverse of phi combustion is basically defined as the relatively rapid chemical combination of hydrogen and carbon in the fuel with the oxygen in the air resulting in liberation of energy in the form of heat now combustion is very complicated uh, phenomena so uh, the conditions necessary for combustion are the presence of combustible mixture some means of initiation for the combustion and stabilization and propagation of flame in the combustion chamber as i have told you in si engine the combustible mixture is generally supplied by carburetor basically carburetor is preparing the air fuel mixture in the requisite ratio and the combustion in is initiated by an electric spark given by the spark plug the combustion process is not a simple and direct combination of atoms as indicated by the chemical equations which we have discussed in earlier slides the oxidation reaction have multi stage nature and are chain reactions which uh, in which an important role is played by active intermediate products formed during the reactions so there are many species 
which are formed during the chain reactions which are known as intermediate species now experiments have shown that the ignition of charge is only possible within certain limits of fuel air ratio so these ignition limits correspond approximately to those mixture ratios at lean and rich ends of the scale where the heat released by spark is no longer sufficient to initiate combustion in the neighboring unburnt mixture the flame will propagate only if temperature of the burnt gases exceed approximately 1500 kelvin in the case of hydrocarbon air mixture so at room temperature for example the required temperature of 1500 kelvin to be reached the relative fuel air ratio that is actual fuel air ratio divided by stoichiometric or chemically correct fuel air ratio must lie between 0.5 and 2 for a hydrocarbon fuel the stoichiometric fuel air ratio is about 1 is to 15 and hence the fuel air must be between 1 is to 32 1 is to 7 the lower end upper limits i mean to say ignition limits of the mixture depend upon mixture ratio and temperature the ignition limits are wider at increased temperatures because of the enhanced rates of reaction and higher thermal diffusivity uh, coefficients of the mixture now we want to discuss the stages of combustion in si engine before uh, discussing the real or actual p theta diagram i like to uh, throw some light on theoretical p theta diagram if we talk about the various strokes then you know that after the compression or as soon as the compression is completed theoretically speaking at the end of compression spark is generated which initiates the combustion so as the combustion propagates there will be high pressure gas that will be produced in the cylinder and expansion of these gases will occur during which power is generated now in the theoretical p theta diagram as evident that there is instantaneous rise of pressure at 180 degree you must be uh, uh, watching that there is instantaneous rise of pressure after which expansion occurs from c to t now theoretically it is assumed that combustion is instantaneous process and it is leading to the instantaneous and you can say drastic increase of pressure but actually things are not as it is shown on the p theta diagram combustion is basically a finite process it takes finite time to occur and likely the pressure rise also take certain finite time to occur so that is why the actual p theta diagram differ a lot from theoretical p theta diagram now this is the actual uh, p theta diagram for the combustion in si engine so basically different stages of combustion of the si engine have also been shown on this diagram now in a spark ignition engine a sufficiently homogeneous mixture of vaporized fuel air and residual gases is ignited by a single intense and high temperature spark the spark that is generated between the spark plug electrodes at the moment of discharge the temperature of electrodes even exceeds 10000 degrees celsius so that leaves behind a thin thread of flame now 
from this thin thread of flame combustion is spreading to the envelope of mixture immediately surrounding it at the rate which depends basically upon the temperature of the flame front and also upon the density of the surrounding envelope so basically the flame is growing or the thin thread of flame is growing similar to that as the soap bubble expands so basically the flame front that is advancing in the si engine can be compared either to the expansion of a soap bubble which expands gradually or it may be compared to a ripple that is formed in a stainless steel water you must have seen if someone uh, one is throwing a stone in a stainless steel water of a pond then waves are generated these waves are known as ripples so basically the waves or wave fronts are generated and they are advancing outwardly so similar way here also the flame front also advances outwardly and that is covering the entire combustion chamber so if the con uh, contents of cylinder were at rest the flame bu bubble would expand with steadily increasing speed until extended throughout the whole mass whereas in the actual engine cylinder the mixture is not at rest it is in fact in highly turbulent condition and this turbulent breaks the filament of flame into a ragged front front thus enhancing its surface area from which heat is radiated so basically the advance of flame front is speeded and that too significantly so the rate at which flame front travels is dependent primarily on the degree of turbulence now the actual p theta diagram is shown on the slide the combustion is imagined as if it is developing in two stages one the growth and development of semi propagating nucleus of flame and this stage is known as ignition lag or preparation phase and the other one the spread of flame front throughout the combustion chamber the ignition lag is a chemical process depending upon the nature of the fuel upon both the temperature and pressure the proportion of the exhaust gas and also upon the temperature coefficient of the fuel the second stage that is propagation of flame this is a mechanical one this is pure and this is simple the two stages are not entirely distinct as the nature and velocity of combustion changes gradually the starting point of the second stage is where first measurable rise of pressure can be seen on the indicated diagram that is the point where the line of combustion departs from the compression line now see uh, the diagram over here point a basically shows the point of passage of spark means a spark is generated over here and this point is somewhat say 28 degree before top dead center b is the point at which first rise of pressure can be detected and it is somewhat 8 degree before top dead center and c is denoting the attainment of peak pressure high pressure maximum pressure of the cycle so the ab represents the first stage which is about of 20 degree of crank travel and bc is the second stage that is propagation of flame though the uh, point c makes the completion of flame travel but it does not uh, mean that at this point the whole of the heat of the fuel has been liberated 
for even after the passage of flame some further chemical adjustment takes place they the chemical adjustment due, due uh, may be due to reassociation which is known as after burning and this after burning this continued throughout the expansion stroke now there is an important term which is known as s by v ratio as the surface area of the chamber increases the gases are exposed to greater cooling area now for a given amount of heat added the space or the volume of the combustion chamber in which this heat is confined is important because part of this supplied heat will be lost through the combustion chamber walls and the amount of this loss depends upon s by v ratio the larger the s by v ratio the more heat will be transferred to the cylinder walls so the s by v ratio there is an indication of the cooling that might be expected from a given combustion chamber so basically this is the comparison of s by v ratio of two simple combustion chambers of two engines having different size bore but the same diameter to stroke ratio and the same compression ratio so both are having the same compression ratio they have different bore size but the ratio of diameter and stroke is same means 75 is to 17.5 is the same as 150 is to 35 so bore to height ratio remains the same now you compare the s by v ratio now the surface area for both have been given both the bore sizes have been given volume have also been calculated now s by v ratio have been given so as the bore size is increasing s by v ratio is decreasing so it is basically clear that the cylinder with small bore tend to have a high s by v ratio indicating that it will tend to lose a greater proportion of heat through the walls and consequently it will run cooler means it is going to have lower temperatures because of the enhanced heat transfer through the cylinder walls because of this fact engines of small bore that is engines having high s by v ratio are generally difficult to start in order to overcome this deficiency special devices that is glow plug are often used with such engines to raise the temperature of the air in the combustion chamber until the en engine is running procedure the first phase of the combustion which is known as ignition lag is basically not a period of inactivity but it is a chemical process the ignition lag in the terms of crank angle is 10 to 20 degree and the duration of ignition lag depends on the following factors the fuel the nature of the fuel means the self ignition temperature of the fuel so the ignition lag depends upon the chemical nature of the fuel higher the self ignition temperature of the fuel the longer will be ignition lag mixture ratio the ignition lag is smallest for the mixture ratio which gives the maximum temperature this mixture ratio is somewhat richer than the stoichiometric ratio so as shown it is 110% of the stoichiometric so you can witness the thing on the diagram shown on the slide initial temperature and pressure the rate of chemical reaction depends to a great extent on temperature the rate being very slow at low temperatures but increases rapidly with increase in temperature the rate of chemical reaction also depends on pressure but to a smaller extent the ignition lag therefore decreases with an increase in the temperature and pressure of the gas at the time of passage of a spark 
thus increasing the intake temperature and pressure increasing the compression ratio and retarding the spark all will reduce the ignition lag turbulence ignition lag is not much affected by turbulence intensity turbulence is directly proportional to engine speed therefore increase in engine speed will not affect the ignition lag that much measured in milliseconds but as the speed is increased the crank angle in the same milliseconds are increased thus measured in the degrees of crank travel the ignition lag increases almost linearly with the engine speed therefore because of this it becomes necessary to advance the spark timings at higher speeds now excessive turbulence of the mixture in the area of spark plug is harmful since it increases the heat transfer from the combustion zone and leads to the unstable development of the nucleus of flame that is why the spark plug is usually arranged in a small recess in the wall of combustion chamber the electrode gap is important from the view point of establishment of nucleus of flame if the gap is too less quenching of flame nucleus may occur and the range of fuel air ratio for the development of flame nucleus is reduced this figure is showing the electrode gap and the fuel air ratios required for the different compression ratios the lower the compression ratio the higher is the electrode gap required for a compression ratio of 7 or more a gap of 0.625 to 5 mm is necessary the voltage required at the spark plug electrode to produce the spark is found to increase with decrease in fuel air ratio and with increase in compression ratio and engine load knowledge of the variables which influence the flame propagation velocity is important as the flame velocity affects the rate of pressure rise in the cylinder and has a great impact on the certain types of abnormal combustion there are several factors which basically influences the flame speed but the most important ones are the fuel air ratio and the turbulence fuel air ratio the composition of the working mix, uh, mixture affects the rate of combustion and the amount of heat liberated with hydrocarbon fuels the maximum flame velocity occur when the mixture strength is 110% of the stoichiometric that is about 10% richer than the stoichiometric when the mixture is made made leaner or is enriched and still more the velocity of flame diminishes basically the lean mixture means the mixture that is containing less amount of fuel than the stoichiometric they release less thermal energy resulting in lower flame temperature and lower flame speed now in the case of rich mixtures we have incomplete combustion some carbon only burns to carbon monoxide and not to carbon dioxide which basically results in the production of less thermal energy and therefore flame speed reduces compression ratio a higher compression ratio increases the pressure and temperature of the working mixture and decreases the concentration of residual gases so basically these conditions reduce the ignition lag of combustion and therefore ignition advance required is less high pressures and temperature of the compressed mixture also speed up the second phase of combustion therefore total ignition angle is reduced maximum pressure and indicated mean effective pressure are increased we will show you uh, the figure on next uh, slide which basically shows the increased speed of combustion with increase of compression ratio so basically this is the diagram which is showing the ricardo's variable compression engine at compression ratio 4 5 and 6 with the same mixture strength and the same ignition timing in all cases the use of higher compression ratio increases the surface to volume ratio of the combustion chamber thereby increasing the part of the mixture which after burns in the third phase so basically increase in compression ratio results in the increase in temperature 
which increases the tendency of the engine to detonate initial temperature and pressure increase intake temperature and pressure increases the flame speed engine load with increase in engine load the cycle pressures increases hence the flame speed increases in spark ignition engine with decrease in load power of engine is reduced by throttling so basically due to throttling the initial and final compression pressures decrease and the dilution of the working mixture because of the residual gases increases this makes the smooth development of self propagating nucleus of flame difficult and unsteady and prolongs the ignition lag means it increases the ignition lag period the difficulty can be overcome to a certain extent by enriching the mixture at low loads but still it is difficult to avoid after burning during a substantial part of the expansion stroke so basically poor combustion at low loads and the necessity of mixture enrichment are among the main disadvantages of spark ignition engines which cause wastage of fuel and discharge of a large amount of products of incomplete combustion like carbon monoxide and other poisonous substances turbulence turbulence basically plays an important role in combustion phenomena the flame speed is very low in non turbulent mixture a turbulent motion of the mixture intensifies the processes of heat transfer and mixing of the burnt and unburnt portion in the flame front that is diffusion so basically these two factors cause the velocity of turbulent flame to increase practically in proportion to the turbulent velocity the turbulence of the mixture is due to admission of fuel air mixture through comparatively narrow sections of the intake pipe walls etc in the suction stroke now how turbulence can be increased turbulence can be increased at the end of compression by suitable design of combustion chamber which involves the geometry of cylinder head and piston crown the degree of turbulence increases directly with the piston speed if there is no turbulence the time occupied by each explosion would be so great as to make the high speed internal combustion engines impracticable now insufficient turbulence lowers the efficiency due to incomplete combustion of the fuel however if the turbulence is more that is also undesirable so the effects of turbulence are basically the turbulence is accelerating the chemical action by intimating intimate mixing of the fuel and the oxygen so the turbulence allows the ignition advance to be reduced and therefore weak mixtures can be burnt the increase of flame speed due to tur turbulence is basically reducing the combustion time and hence minimizing the tendency to detonate now turbulence increase the heat flow to the cylinder wall and in the limit excessive turbulence may quench the flame may extinguish the flame the excessive turbulence results in more rapid pressure rise and the high rate of pressure rise causes the crank shaft to spring A spring means jerk is produced and the rest of the engine to vibrate with high periodicity resulting resulting in rough and noisy running of the engine the higher the engine speed the greater the turbulence inside the cylinder for this reason the flame speed increases almost linearly with engine speed so if the engine speed is doubled the time required in milliseconds for the flame to traverse the combustion space would be halved double the original speed and hence half the original time would give the same number of crank degrees for flame propagation the crank angle required for the flame propagation which is the main phase of combustion will remain almost constant at all speeds 
this is an important characteristics of spark ignition engines however the increase in engine speed would lead to ignition advance due to the first phase of combustion now we take up the example as tabulated on the slide we consider a petrol engine running at 1500 rpm let us say for the first stage of combustion the ignition lag that is the time required in terms of crank angle is 8 degree of crank rotation and for the second stage the flame propagation through the combustion space required 12 degrees of crank travel thus the total ignition period is 20 degree of crank rotation now if the engine speed is doubled from 1500 to 3000 rpm the time required for the second stage will be again 12 degree of the crank rotation due to the doubling of turbulent in uh, turbulence intensity time in milliseconds is halved and in terms of the crank angle it remains constant but for the first stage time in milliseconds is constant and hence in the terms of crank angle it will be doubled that is it would be 16 degree this would make the total ignition period of 16 plus 20 12 so, uh, uh, that is equal to 28 at 3000 rpm compared to 20 degree at 500 rpm so from this example we come to know that with increase in engine speed ignition has to be advanced engines of similar design generally run at the same piston speed this is achieved by smaller engines having larger rpm and larger engines having smaller rpm now due to the same piston speed the inlet velocity the degree of turbulence and flame speed are nearly same in similar engines regardless of the size however in small engines the flame travel is small and in large engines it is large therefore if the engine size is doubled the time required in milliseconds for the flame propagation through combustion space will also be doubled but with lower rpm of larger engines the time for flame propagation in terms of crank angle would be nearly same as in smaller engines so we can say the number of crank degrees required for flame travel will be about the same irrespective engine size provided the engines are similar the rate of pressure rise is very important aspect of flame development from engine design and operation point of view it considerably influences the maximum cylinder pressure the power produced and the smooth running of the engine the rate or pressure rise the rate of pressure rise depends on the mass rate of combustion of the mixture in the cylinder the figure is showing pressure crank angle diagrams for three combustion rates three different combustion rates one is for high high the second for the usual and the third for the low combustion rate now it is clear from the figure that with lower rates of combustion longer time is required for the combustion which basically necessitates the initiation of burning at an earlier point on the compression stroke with higher rates of burning the time required for the combustion is smaller and rate of pressure rises higher moreover the peak pressure produced is close to top dead center which is desirable because it produces a great force acting through a large portion of the power stroke but peak pressure and hence peak temperature too close to top dead center will give a long time for rapid heat loss from the cylinder the high rate of pressure rise basically causes the rough running of the engine because of the vibrations and the jerks produced in the crank shaft if the rate of pressure rise is very high it results in abnormal combustion which is known as detonation so practically the engine is so designed that approximately one half of the pressure rise take place at the position when the piston reaches top dead center this results in peak pressure enter 10 to 15 degree after top dead center so in this way a very small portion of the expansion stroke is lost lost and the gain is a smooth engine operation thus saving an appreciable period of time during which loss of heat is rapid
so we have discussed the basic concepts related to the combustion in SI engine and also the variables that affect the flame propagation in SI engine.